Welcome to Meconomist, everybody, and today's video is about why I took my Porsche Cayman off of Turo, but also why I still plan on using the app in the future as a rental service. Real quick, before I jump into the video, though, I want to share with you guys this new Porsche Cayman retro t-shirt design that I have. I just designed it, and it's on redbubble.com for purchase. So if you're interested in buying it, check out the link in the description. I'd really appreciate it. Now, I hesitated about making this video for a while because it just seemed kind of obvious that I wasn't going to be renting my Porsche out on Turo anymore. If you've seen some of my past videos about Turo and my experiences on the app, you could probably guess why I quit. More interestingly, there's a couple of other reasons why I probably would have taken my Porsche off Turo anyways, even if I hadn't had those bad experiences. So in case you're new to Turo, it's basically an app that allows you to rent out your personal car to other people and make some money off of it. It's almost like an Airbnb, but for cars. A lot of the problems with the Turo app are similar problems to all of the other sort of gig economy apps that are out there. Uber, Airbnb, MoviePass, all these apps are trying to bring you a service that already exists, but at a much cheaper price by kind of leveraging the shared economy. In short, they're basically reducing costs by skirting around the regulations that the traditional companies would have to adhere to, and they're shifting a lot of the costs to one side of the equation. And they do this by basically claiming that they're just a facilitator of a transaction and not an actual service provider themselves. In Turo's case, since they're not really a rental company, they're just facilitating a transaction between someone who's willing to rent out their car and someone who wants to pay a lower price for a rental, they're effectively making the person rent out the car take on all the risk and all the costs that the rental company normally would. It all comes down to the classic economic cliche, which is more risk, more reward. So the person renting out the car is taking on a lot more risk, but they're getting a higher reward by taking in a lot of income. And as long as the expenses and costs and things like that don't exceed the income that you're taking in, then you're gonna make money. Do I recommend Turo as an income source for other people, even though I'm not using it anymore as an income source for myself? Well, I think it really depends on your situation. First of all, I really think you need to have a savings goal if you're gonna be using Turo or any other kind of gig economy app as a source of income. The reason is that it's very unstable and it requires you to do a lot of sort of initial work and the income is not something that's really reliable and steady. The primary reason that I was using it in the past year or so was that I was trying to save up about $3,000 to go on a Europe vacation with my girlfriend for about 10 days. So if you have a savings goal, then you can kind of calculate out, okay, I need to make X amount of money to meet my goal, which means I need to do X number of days of rentals and Hopefully I can do that many rentals within this time period before I need that money. In an ideal world, that savings goal will be something that's not something that's a necessity to your life because again, the money is very inconsistent and it is a little bit risky. So something like a vacation or maybe you're trying to put a down payment on like a second car or something like that. That's the sort of thing that, you know, you don't need it, but it's a good goal to save towards and it's something that might be worth risking your car uh, in order to achieve that goal. It's kind of like putting your money in the stock market. You're risking your asset in the hopes that in the long run you'll make more gains than losses, but you still have a small risk that the losses will be greater, even though over the vast majority of people in the long run, you're gonna end up making more money than you lose. So one more thing I forgot to say before the sun started blasting me in the face is when you're renting out your car on Turo, uh, a lot of the money that you're making is effectively just sort of value that you're pulling out of your car as an asset itself. So without getting too academic, it's basically your car has a value and by renting it out, some of that value is being converted into value for the customer that they're paying you cash for. Um, so in a sense, some of the dollars that you're making are actually dollars that you're pulling out of your car in the form of wear and tear, depreciation, and uh, things like that. I don't know, does that make sense? Maybe that's just mudding the waters a little bit more and you should just ignore everything I just said. 
Another thing I could see is maybe you're between jobs and you just need a little bit of extra cash in order to make your car payment or something like that. Turo could be an option to temporarily make some money. So there is a set of people who I think should never use Turo when they're renting out their car. And that's people who only have one car and that's their only form of transportation. If that's the case with you, don't use Turo. I really don't recommend it because there's always a risk that somebody's gonna crash your car and then it's gonna be out of commission for an extended period of time. Or this is something that happened to me too where you're renting out your car for three days and then the customer says, hey, actually I wanna keep it for an extra couple days. So that's the sort of thing that you have to anticipate and if your one car is the only form of transportation you have to get to work and things like that, then it's definitely not a good choice for you. What a lot of people point out with Turo and Uber and Airbnb and a lot of these gig economy apps is that if you actually calculate the net income after all the expenses that are incurred over the long run and you calculate how much time you've actually spent, your hourly wage in a lot of cases is actually going to be less than minimum wage. And so you'd be better off by just getting a job at Starbucks or something like that and working hours there on the side because your money per hour spent is better. What that argument doesn't include is the fact that you have so much flexibility when you're working in the gig economy. So yes, you can make more money per hour if you work at Starbucks, but you're going to have set hours. You're not going to be able to just go work for a month and then quit and then come back for a month and then quit and then not come back for six months and then go work a few weeks again. So that's the benefit of Turo over like a traditional income source is that you have a lot of flexibility and you can actually set on a calendar on the app what days you're available, what days you're not available, which days can you uh, change keys and which days you can't and you can actually change prices based on the date. Say you can make weekends more expensive than weekdays. Uh, you can give people discounts for renting longer term uh, because you actually make a lot more money longer term per hour spent. And if you see that maybe you're the only Porsche Cayman in your market and nobody else has a Porsche Cayman that they're renting out, you can kind of raise your price to sort of meet that supply and demand. So overall, my advice for people that are looking into Turo as an income source is one, make sure you understand the risks that are involved and make sure that your schedule is clear and that you have a lot of flexibility in your schedule while you're using it. And two, make sure that you have a clear savings goal so that you know what you're working towards because it's not a consistent form of income and it will be pretty unstable and there will be some gains and losses and rocky roads along the way. So how does this all play into why I quit Turo or why I took my Porsche Cayman off of Turo? Well, one, I hit my savings goal. That's probably the primary reason. And I saved up enough money to go on a 10 day trip through Europe with my girlfriend, which is exactly what I was planning for. And so even if I hadn't had those bad experiences, I probably would have kind of backed off of Turo anyways. Two, I also found some other sources of income that can make me money passively uh, in a much sort of uh, more relaxing and less stressful way than Turo was. So I'm not putting my car at risk. I'm not letting strangers drive my car. And um, I'm still making a little bit of money on the side, not nearly as much as I, as I did when I was renting out my car. But if you balance that with the amount of stress that's saved and anxiety that's saved and probably years off of my life that's saved, it's definitely well worth it. And then obviously the third one is the one that you all know about where I did have a couple of bad experiences and uh, that sort of made me rethink the whole cost benefit analysis of Turo. All right, so, so far in this video, I've only been talking about why I quit Turo as someone renting out their car on the app. But that's kind of ignoring half of the whole business of Turo, which is the rental side of it, where you're actually going on the app and renting a car from someone else. And that's where I have pretty much completely different feelings about it. I will probably never use a traditional rental car company ever again, as long as a Turo option is available. And there's basically three reasons why. One, of course, is the price. Two is the awesome variety of different cars that you can get. And three is the fact that the app is super convenient and it's pretty darn easy to use. For example, last year I rented a Ford Fusion out in Phoenix and the guy that owned the car, he came, delivered it to me at one hotel in Phoenix. Then my girlfriend and I drove all around Arizona for a couple days. 
We came back to Phoenix at a different hotel, dropped the car off in the parking lot. The guy came, picked it up and charged us on the app. And it was completely seamless, very easy. I never had to go to a specific place to turn in the car. I didn't have to sign a bunch of papers afterwards. It was all through the app. So if you have someone renting out their car that really understands customer service, that's gonna be a huge benefit and you're gonna have a much, much more easygoing and enjoyable experience renting out a vehicle than if you're going through the hassle of a traditional rental company. So in conclusion, even though Turo has its problems and when it comes to renting out my own personal car, those problems right now outweigh the benefits I think it's a great app that I will continue to recommend to people if you're looking for a cheap way to rent a car and you don't wanna go through all the hassle and BS that comes with the traditional rental car companies. There's also a select group of people that I would recommend it to as a way to make a little bit of side cash, but you have to take in and realize that there are a lot of risks with it and just make sure that you're aware of those before you go into it. I hope you guys enjoyed this video and I appreciate you guys watching. Again, remember you can buy this cool Porsche Cayman t-shirt that I designed on redbubble.com. There's a link in the description and I'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks.